be on and off, but the life of a principal doesn't end at three o'clock or whenever the whenever the time is up. So Mr. Tidmore is at another meeting right now, but he'll be in and out and definitely he would like to um, bring greetings and thank you all for taking the time out of your busy schedule this evening to present for us. When I spoke with Ms. Henderson about the CARES program and she was telling me what was gonna be on the agenda, I was so excited because as you all know, this year, it has been very troublesome, and it's definitely for us all. We need to take the time out for ourselves. You know, the parents, parents are at home. They're dealing with their children, making sure they're on, getting their education, you know, trying to find some other activities for their children. But then the parents, you know, they are being drained and getting drained. So when Ms. Henderson said we're going to do this program, I was I was excited because I was like, wow, I would like to get, you know, learn some more about the yoga, learn some more about the mindfulness, you know, self-care and self-awareness. So all the topics that we have tonight, they are very inviting. So I'm definitely excited about this evening. And then our parents who are not able to come, as Ms. Henderson said, if you all can record your session so we can play, you know, have it for our parents, that would be wonderful because this is something definitely that everyone could, that everyone can use. So like I said, I'm very excited about this evening um, just to hear more information and gain more knowledge about what's what's out there and um just to just to thank you all again our partners at harvey rice thank you all for being here and taking your time and your continued time to um be with us here at harvey rice thank you so much really appreciate you all thank you miss henderson thank you so much um miss morton i greatly appreciate that so, as Ms. Morton touched on, um, if parenting wasn't stressful enough already, now you have to add in virtual learning, a pandemic, and an increase in social and political awareness. Um, so this new normal has caused our parents to take additional roles, um, and with additional roles comes more stress. Um, and this, inter this interactive workshop that we have planned for you all this evening will provide participants or our parents with the information and techniques on how to de-stress um, and define stress, recognize stress, and put some things in, as I like to call it, our imaginary backpack. So when our parents are and families and even us are don't have the um are not able to make those connections they'll be able to pull those tools and tips that they might learn this evening out of that imaginary backpack that they have and be able to apply it um in real life and in their situation so maybe they can uh, find ways to de-stress in in certain moments where they can't reach out and contact emily or lisa or dr golden and they'll have this information readily available for them so with that said our panel discussion um, it's called de-stressing in the midst of a pandemic, and we all know how to, what that looks like, right? Because I know um, we're dealing with the isolation, um, we're dealing with lack of human contact, um, we can't see our, our loved ones. Christmas is going to be very unique. Um, Thanksgiving was very unique this year, but some folks went out and hung out with their parents. I'm just quite, I'm, but it, it's going to be what it's going to be because we need that interaction. We need to be connected to other people. So with our panelists, we have two wonderful people that I just adore at Mystery. We have Dr. Dolan and we have Lisa McCraney and two people that I have great respect for. Um, so with this, in this workshop, they will provide tips and techniques to help parents and caregivers uh, effectively cope during COVID-19, as well as give them practices of self-compassion and self-validation, which can help our parents to be kinder to and gentler to themselves. Um, 
I'm excited about this, this workshop and this presentation. Um, just to give you guys just a little bit of background information about our panelists. Um, Ms. Lisa McCraney is a native of Akron, um, I'm sorry, Akron Digital. I went all the way back. <laughs> It was Akron just digital just came right behind it. Mm -mm. So mm -mm. Akron, Ohio, and she is licensed as a counselor by the state of Ohio. And Lisa has 16 years experience working in mental health and holds as a licensed professional clinical counselor with a supervisor uh, designation. But what's really important is what I love is that in 2014, Lisa founded Healing Heart Counseling and Consultation Services. <laughs> based in Akron, Ohio, and serves clients in Akron, Akron, Akron. My favorite is their motto, um, and it's offering hope for hurting, healing hearts, takes the walls off counseling, allowing clients to seek and receive the help and hope they need to continue their life's journey. So that's Ms. Lisa, and then Dr. Yes, Gushin, and Dr. Alexandria Gordon, um, is a postdoctoral research fellow at the Health Center, as well as Cleveland State University, and the Centers for Education. Dr. Golden received her doctorate in clinical community um, psychology at the University of South Carolina. She is passionate about increasing equity in education and fostering resiliency in racially diverse groups. Um, so, I'm going to now turn over our stage to uh, Dr. Golden and Lisa McCraney. Um, we did flip a coin uh, prior, like you do on the football game. So we did flip that coin to see who wants to go first. So since Ms. Lisa has her mic off, I will start with Ms. Lisa. Thank you. Mm, I, was gonna, uh, I was gonna relent and let the good doctor go first. <laughs> But I did turn my mic off, so, uh, so I will go. Thank you so much for inviting me and allowing me to uh, come and just kind of share what I love, which is self-care. Um, it is probably one of my favorite things to teach on and to discuss um, and to remind people uh, that it is a resource that we have in our tool in our toolkit. Um, it's something that if you're not carrying it around in your back pocket, front pocket, wallet, you know, purse, if it's not connected connected to you in some way, some shape, form, or fashion every single day, I want to encourage you to attach it to you. Um, you know, we have grown up, uh, I, don't, I don't, I'll give my own age, and in that way, people will feel safe to say, do and say what they want. But as a 44-year-old, I'm not sure that I was ever taught growing up that it was okay to, to take a rest, to pause, and to really consider um, that life is hard right now and that things are tough. And so, you know, I know I was taught and I know my, my family and my cousins and even some of my peers and colleagues, we were taught to just kind of keep it moving, right? We were taught lessons that if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. Uh, you know, um, we were taught things about pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps, no matter what was presented to us. Even if your bootstrap is falling off, you know, we were told to kind of just find another one and keep it moving. And I just want to debunk that myth and kind of help people change the narrative about what self-care looks like. Really what we've been taught is how to survive. Um, and there is a huge difference between self-care and survival. Um, and so one of the things I have, a, I have a presentation that I, I do often called, but did you die? Um, and, and a lot of times I, I, that came from, from the movie that I had never seen before I actually <laughs> did the workshop. Um, but it, it really follows the notion of if something does not kill you, if you do not work yourself to the point of death, you haven't worked hard enough. And that's just a lie from the pits of hell. Excuse me, I am a preacher um, as well. <laughs> and so uh, that's just a lie um, that, that we have to kind of keep going regardless of our emotional state, regardless of the climate, regardless of what we're thinking and regardless of what we're feeling. Uh, I wrote some notes down. 
so that I could stay focused because again, if you give me a microphone, I'm going to talk and talk and talk. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of give some tips really quickly on what you can do as parents and even as educators, because you all are carrying um, a heavy weight as well. And I'm not sure anybody ever pauses to tell you that it's okay for you to woosa too. Um, and so as educators and caregivers for of the parents and of the students, we're all in this together. Um, and so one of the things that I wanted to share with you all um, as it pertains to self-care, I want us to key in on the word self. I want us to think about self-care. I want us to think about self-compassion. Um, and then I also want us to think about self-sabotage. Um, because if we miss out on the self-care and we miss out on the self-compassion, we almost automatically set ourselves into self-sabotage. And so one of the things that I want you all to do um, and to consider every single day is to tell yourself the truth and believe it. Every single day tell myself the truth and believe it. Because oftentimes we will show up to the places that we're assigned to work or show up to the people we're assigned to care for and love on, but we haven't done a personal inventory yet. And so I show up sometimes uh, and try to present like I'm okay when I'm not. And so part of effective self-care is to tell myself the truth no matter what, and believe it. And so if I'm waking up in the morning and it's a rough day, we call this in my family grieving season, right? Um, we, you know, had a significant loss and it just, this time of year hurts a little more. Add the pandemic on and, and uh, take away the ability that we have to do some of those things that we would do normally to care for ourselves has made it a little bit harder. So there are some days that I, um, wake up in grief. Uh, I remember a couple of weeks ago, grief met me at, at hello. When I woke up, I was already crying. I was already in a space, right? It is up to me to then say, today might be a little something and acknowledge the fact that my heart hurts, my heart is heavy, my eyes are heavy, and I might have to make an adjustment in order to care for me well, so that I can then show up and care for others well. So that's one of the first things that I wanna share with you all is to tell yourself the truth all the time and believe it. And then the other key thing for parents and for educators, allow the people connected to you to tell you the truth as well and believe that too. Uh, I had a mom reach out to me, one of, one of, my, uh, one of my clients talked to me, um, and she was really frustrated about her child, who is normally an A student, um, is currently getting C's. She was really frustrated about that um, and really disappointed. And I remember her saying something like, all I ask her to do is go to school and get good grades, except for she's in a pandemic too. And so the truth for her is pretty much the truth for all of us. Working virtual learning, doing work from home, at least. I don't know what you all are doing in Cleveland, but I know it's five people in my house all sharing the same Wi-Fi. Um, and so uh, I, I have a 10th grader, I have a, seventh, a sixth grader, and I have a first grader. Uh, and and one, at least one day a week, each one of them is over it. The whole thing, just throw the whole computer out the window. So I've had, I have to allow them to tell me the truth as well. I, have to, I, I can't ex expect an A mandate when we have um, this kind of pandemic happening. Now, I know she's able, my 15-year-old, to get straight A's. However, I also know that I am Zoom tired. I have Zoom fatigue. I have meeting fatigue. And I can imagine that a fifth grader or a 15, uh, 15 year old is probably struggling as well. So you have to allow the people connected to you to tell the truth as well and not, to, and not take it personal um, and not feel like it's the end of the world. Um, and then that, that leads me to my next point is, you, what's your help and what are your resources? And a lot of times we think outward when we think about help and resources. And so if you're not connected to a lot of people, or you may not be connected to a lot of things, you might think that you don't have a whole lot of resources. Um, 
But I want to take your mind back. I do a workshop called Back to the Basics. And that workshop, again, has to do with self-care, self-esteem, and really just working our mind around anxiety and things like that. And I guarantee you, everybody connected to this Zoom call has a resource or five right in your own house. So when you're thinking about how can I ground myself, how can I uh, take my mind from the cares and the worries and the anxiety and even uh, the depression that may come along with this season? What are some things that I can do? And I think that we can simply go back to the basics. In my mind, I hear the lyrics to the song back in the day when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. Some days I sit and wish I was a kid again. And when I think back to the days before life got hard, what did we do as children? What did we do to keep us going? What did we do to keep our morale up? We did things like we played Uno. I have about five to six stacks of Uno in my, in my bedroom alone. And yes, I play hard against my children and I talk as much trash as possible in terms of our Uno battles. My husband and I have Scrabble battles right? Um, he says, I don't play fair because I play the games on my phone and I know words he doesn't know. I say, pick your poison, hun. It don't matter. You better get on with words for friends and learn something, right? But it's simple things that we have um, right at our disposal. Um, sometimes if I'm able to get out, I go to stores like Mark's and Ollie's and I see what random games they have uh, for a dollar or two. I found a game here. This is called Go Ape. It's literally just like Go Fish, except for each of the cards has some kind of monkey expression on it. And so instead of saying, do you have a five, I have to do this expression and say, do you have a whatever this card is? My kids get into this game and it becomes war in our house. Just a fun little $2 game that I found rambling, running through or walking through and gazing at what Mark's had, what Ollie's had, what Big Lots has, um, so that it doesn't cost me a whole lot of money. If you know me well, you'll know that I'm the coupon queen and I don't believe in paying full price for a thing. And so um, I absolutely try to use the resources that I have to make sure that I can take care of myself well and take care of the people that I love. And then my, famous, my favorite resource that I have is my journal. This is my bestie. It's my best friend, right? Um, in terms of when I am really stressed and overwhelmed, this is the one thing that I can talk to that won't tell, talk back and tell me I'm wrong. Not initially. It's going to give me a place to take my thoughts, my worries, my cares, and give it a safe place to land. And I don't have to be right or wrong with it. I don't have to have negative feedback coming back to me. I can write it all here. I can dump. I can say all the bad words that people don't like you to say. And then I can, I can close it. I can walk away from it. And then I can come back to it, read it again, and tell myself the truth. So we go back to the beginning. And so those, I mean, I could, I still have probably like 12 more points, but I am over my time. And so I'm not going to talk anymore. And I'm going to uh, defer to the, to our doctor, uh, Miss Golden, uh, to give some resources. But that's just a little bit of what um, I wanted to share. And as you can tell, I absolutely love self-care um, because I think if we take care of ourselves, um, it'll stop us from sabotaging. So Thank you, Miss Lisa. You are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for those points. Dr. Golden? Yes, thank you for those points and thank you for um, having me here today. I'm going to, I know that there are questions that you all have prepared for us to get to um, at some point. So um, Ms. McCraney has already uh, hit a few points that I was intending to hit, so I won't go too far into detail about those. But I want to start off by saying um, congratulations and great job for making it here today. In the midst of a pandemic, you prioritized yourself to get here to learn about how to care for yourself. And that is the very start is to recognize that you need to take care of yourself. Um, this has been a really unimaginable 
seriously unimaginable um, year. And it has required constant adjustments um, for all of us and really a, a sense of unknown throughout the um, entire year even now. We just never know what's going to happen next. Um, and so that has been extremely, extremely difficult. As parents, as teachers, not only um, are you a caregiver for your child, not only have you become a, a teacher in the home for your child who is doing uh, virtual learning, you are an employee for whatever job it is that you have to do. Um, and in addition to that, you're still a human being who needs to be cared for, who has thoughts and feelings and um, needs and wants. Um, you're a social being who has been stuck in the house for far too long and you don't know how long it's gonna be until you can leave, right? Um, and so I have a few points that I want to touch on today um, on how you can start to shift the focus back to yourself in the times that are needed. Um, you can really focus on your own accomplishments, realize the moments when you are having a, a bit more of a difficult time um, and figure out how to start refilling your cup uh, daily for yourself and also for the people who need you. So, um, Ms. McCraney mentioned first off taking a personal inventory, and I'm going to say that that is my number one thing is the taking a personal inventory, right? I think we have a tendency to say, oh, I'm fine. I'm, I'm pushing through. Things are a little bit difficult, but I'm okay. I'm making it. I'm not dead yet, right? I'm gonna keep going, um, it's not been that hard. Uh, but even looking back on my own experience um, throughout the pandemic, I started to realize maybe I'm eating so much cereal because I'm stressed and I don't want to cook, right? What are you doing in your own life that is an indication that you are stressed? Um, sometimes we know them in different contexts. We know that when we're not cooking, um, when we are doing that, that thing that we enjoy doing, we're not reading anymore, when we're just tired. Sometimes we realize that that is the moment that we're stressed. But sometimes those things go completely unnoticed. You might say, I'm just tired. I really just want to go to sleep today. It was a long day or the show isn't even that good anymore. But are we really looking into why don't I enjoy this show that I've spent the last 12 seasons watching, right? Why isn't it as good anymore? Why am I eating cereal? And why am I not eating vegetables? I'm an adult, right? I need to fuel my body with nutrients so that it can keep going. This is a true story, yes. This is true, I'm sorry. Um, why am I not exercising at all? Or why don't I care about it at all? Why can't I fit, fix it, fit it into my schedule? These are all things that, while seemingly may not be fun for some of us, are still necessary parts of self-care and the absence of these things is an indication that you are indeed stressed, right? So the first thing um, is to again take that self-inventory and start to learn what are your tales in your life that you're experiencing stress. Are you also eating too much sugary cereal? Um, are you not going on walks like you used to? Are you snapping at your kids a little bit more or you're shutting down a little bit more or you're ignoring all of your text messages all of the time. What is happening in your life that's telling you, I need to pay better attention to myself right now. This is the time, okay? So first, take a personal inventory. The second thing that I'm gonna talk about very briefly is um, giving yourself grace. You are in a time that none of us have lived through before, okay? We've never been here before. We're not functioning at the same capacity that we were last year. Our expectations should not be the same as they were last year. You are no longer just a regular parent. You're a parent in a pandemic. You cannot function the same way that you did last year. You have a lot more on your plate. So give yourself grace. Some of the ways that you can start doing that is Recognize when you are telling yourself negative things like I should be able to, they should be able to, I used to. That's nice that you used to do that. And maybe you will again in the future. But right now, you got a lot of stress, right? 
don't hold yourself to the same expectations that you did before. That's not to say that you can't do it, but you also maybe should allow yourself some grace and know that things are different and you're doing the absolute best that you can in this moment, okay? Once you find those, um, those negative thoughts, switch them, change them into a different way, or even have some things that you're gonna tell yourself. I am the best pandemic parent that I can be. I am doing my best. My children are healthy, they are fed, they're clothed, and they have a roof over their head. And everyone is doing okay right now. We are all doing okay, and we're gonna make the best of this. Another thing that you can do um, includes positive affirmations. Um, so some people like to, these are part of the positive affirmations. Some people like to do this very differently. Sometimes people just have something that they're gonna say to themselves like, I am an awesome parent. I am um, energized. I am ready for today. Or you can even write them on your mirror with an erasable marker or a lipstick, or you can put them on a post-it and put them on your wall. Put them somewhere that you can see to remind yourself exactly who you are and who you wanna be. You're manifesting your destiny. Um, you are in charge. The pandemic doesn't have to take everything from you. You have some, some uh, you have a hand in this still, right? You're still in this fight. Another thing, um, you can do a gratitude journal, or you can just name three things every day that you are grateful for. So some research has been done and it has shown that um, saying three things every day that you are grateful for, or even one thing every day that you're grateful for, um, can uh, decrease depression for people who have been severely depressed. That's a huge deal. And not all of us are even severely depressed. So what could it do for us if I can just say today, I'm really grateful for waking up. I'm really grateful for the job that I have today and that I was able to pay rent this month. It's amazing. What are you grateful for? Okay, the next thing, and really the last thing that I'm gonna focus on, we have a lot of things that are happening. And now that we've been in the house, while you may be uh, not dressing it up as much for work or your kids may or may not be dressing up as much or halfway for school, you still have a lot of chores that you're probably doing. The kids are going to the kitchen, they're probably getting more cups because they can't use one all day, right? Um, they're probably throwing their clothes on the floor as usual, but you see it more because you're at home more now. So what can you do? Be flexible in these times. Remember that it's not gonna be perfect and things will be more difficult than usual. But how can you make the things that are you're experiencing in your household into a game? How can you make your kids, especially the younger ones, excited about household chores and household, house, household things that need to be done? How can you incorporate them in this process? Remember that you are not alone. You got kids too at home. Make them work for it, right? Make uh, making dinner a talk show or a cooking show um, for your kids. You can teach them small things that they're gonna need to learn in the future anyway. Make them peel the potatoes. You don't have to do it, right? Um, teach them how to wash the dishes. Make it a game. Who can pick up all the toys around this room first? And even if you want, you can go to the dollar store and create a little prize box for them for who wins the competition. Anything can be turned into a game with a kid. And if that doesn't work, you can also get small prizes, especially for parents who have to do Zoom meetings and they need their kids a little bit distracted. Um, you can go to the dollar store or to the little $5 section at Target and you can get toys that you only give to your child at the time that you need them to be the most distracted, okay? So self-care can mean incorporating things that are gonna make your life and your day just a little bit easier so that you have the mental space that you need to sort through things or just to literally breathe without somebody near you, okay? Um, I know that we have some questions that we wanna get to and I'm very excited to hear what these questions are. Um, and again, thank you for having me here. Thank you, thank you ladies so much. That was wonderful, those were great tips um just great tips um and and techniques um some things that we never even thought about like how simple it is to use your journal right and do a gratitude jar and just walk around and just 
just announce one day that I'm grateful or one, once a day that I'm grateful for something. And then also how powerful I am statements are. Because like you said, we're manifesting the events in our lives. So when we say I am or I will or I will have, those things, we're very powerful. And so that power comes out and however we look at it, the universe hears and it, it gives up this order, right? So when we change how we speak, or we change how we see things, then we'll change our speech. Um, so I learned a lot this evening. I'm so, I'm, I'm excited. So we'll open up the floor um, if any of our parents, and because it's such a small group, so I don't guess we need to put them in the chat. Um, but if you all have some questions that you all want for this panelist, um, please un un um, unmute yourself and ask your question. And that I have some. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Ashley. Hi. Um, and I just want to tell the ladies, thank you so much for that. Uh, I appreciate you you saying, you know, um, I'm trying to think who just, uh, Ms. Golden, you said, uh, tell yourself that you are mastering, you know, this parenting thing during this pandemic. I think that was so important for me. I have five children at home. I started a business. I quit my job. A um, lot of things going on, a lot of income loss and a lot of stuff. And it's just like, I feel that going through this, it's almost kind of like you tell yourself like, well, if you're not cooking every day, you're a bad parent. Or if you're not helping, you know, your child every day with homework and you're not making sure that you're bad. And this is like, you find yourself putting all of this, these, uh, these new tasks on yourself and is, oh my God, you can crash and burn and it's really overwhelming. So I do appreciate you saying that because it is hard. This year alone has been so hard on so many levels and it's been extremely tr trying. And I think even with, um, with uh, Lisa, she was saying how you know, um, her, uh, somebody said that their daughter was failing and they're normally a straight A student, but now they have C's. Understanding that the child is also going through, through the pandemic as well. Like that's true. You know, and like one of my daughters, uh, she's in sixth grade and she was just like, mom, I struggled before homes, you know, having to be home for school. She was like, and I'm struggling now. She was like, so, and I, once she said it, I'm like, okay, let me draw back. You know, because I'm fearful that if you don't do your work on time, everybody, you're going to fail. And it's this. so it's like, let me take my uh, stresses away um, because I have to understand that she's also stressed. So it's just I just thank you guys for this, um, this, this platform, this space to be able to talk about it, because um, sometimes I feel, you know, sometimes I didn't feel like I could say I'm having a hard time with this sometimes I, I didn't feel that it was okay for me to say I want to sit in the car a lot longer than normal because I'm not ready to go in the house because I know that my house is crazy I normally don't let my living room be this dirty this long or socks and shoot like it's all of that it's just every area has been crazy so thank you so much for this and just giving us a space to breathe and say that we don't like it and it still be okay so thank you <laughs> Absolutely. And, and great job for you for all that you've done this year. Right. Um, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if I could have done that much. But I also wonder um, what Ms. McCraney mentioned that we have deb debunking the myth that we have to show up and, and pretend that we feel strong for our kids. I wonder what it would be like if we said to our kids like, hey, I'm having a hard time. This has been really hard. Let me tell you how it's been hard for me. Tell me how it's been hard for you. And we open up the conversation so that um, both parents and kids can process emotions. And we teach our children, it's okay to not be okay sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Like this is, these are hard moments. Let's talk about how we're going to get through them. Absolutely. I, I'm definitely going to piggyback on that. Um, I, I literally, you know, I'm diagnosed with anxiety and disorder, uh, anxiety disorder and depression myself. And my children know that those are not foreign words to them. Um, so they know what it means when I say I'm overwhelmed and I need a timeout. Um, they know what it means to ground. They know what it, what it means to settle. 
right? Um, because I use that language with them because I can imagine that if my grown self um, has to take time away because life gets a little heavy, they also need to learn how to manage when life gets heavy, when it sucks, when I don't wanna do all this math work is what my daughter says and wash dishes too, you know, um, because it is a lot for them. Um, and, and, you know, and for certain classes, I know for her math, that geometry teacher, it's, it's almost as if she's not on a pandemic. She's so sick of him, she didn't know what to do with herself, you know. Um, where she could normally, you know, she would ace math, but right now it's every time she turns around, it's five more things on there to do, you know? Um, and so you do have to give yourself grace. You do have to tell yourself literally what um, Alexandria said, I am, I am rocking this out today. This, this is an awesome day. When you feel like I'm not a good mom because I didn't cook today, if, they, if there is peanut butter and jelly available, if there are noodles available, if there is cereal and milk available, you are a fantastic parent. You made it to the grocery store in a pandemic, right? Uh, use your resources. You, use your resources. And I think what Alexandria said is fantastic. How can we get everybody on board? everybody not just you we are we are surviving this pandemic in this house together i don't even cook on fridays they know it i didn't cook before the pandemic on a friday but even now more so people say what what are they gonna eat i say i don't care if they eat each other i one got a leg one got an arm i it is of no consequence to me i i cannot be a full-time wife, a full-time mother, a full-time entrepreneur running my business and still care about dinner on Friday. Something's got to give and Friday is it. So. I'm going to jump in and say that's real because a lot of our parents, and, 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 and we are carrying this load of, of wanting to be perfect people. And as women, um, we carry it, it, it's a heavier burden because we're the nurturer, we're the parent, we're the one that our kids come to. So we carry this, um, this burden that we have to be all things to everybody, right? We have to be the strong tower. Um, and we put this S on our chest and we walk around with it like it's a badge of honor. And at some time, um, it's very detrimental to us um, because we don't we don't know how to take this mask off or, or step back and breathe and exhale because we feel like we have to be this thing that we don't have to be and there's there's a time when it's okay not to be okay and we need to let the people around us and, and that's when the ladies were so eloquent in saying that tap into your support system there's a support system there for us and and for you um tap into that one of my best is on the line here she's doing our yoga class and she will tell you that i will tap into her at all times <laughs> i call her i cry um and, and she's who I go to because that's my support system. Um, Lisa knows my other best, my brother. Like we, I tap into Lisa. Lisa told me one time, she said, so look, she said, either we're going to be friends or I'm going to be a therapist. I can't be both. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, I want to keep you as my friend because <laughs> you will heal me and I'll be moving right on to the next. So we'll, we'll remain friends. But there, there is a network of people readily available. And if you're a Harvey Rice parent, Miss Nicole knows to call me. And whatever I can do to assist you, I will. I'll, I'll give somebody here for you. I'll do these resources, these outreaches for you. But, but it does begin with you taking that S off your chest and opening up your mouth and telling someone that I'm not okay. It's not a good day. And let us then wrap around and give you the support that you're going to be in need. So with that, do we have any more questions, any more comments before we move on to the second part of our, our program this evening? I have one. Yes, Mr. Carey. Okay, now first I want to say that, that the uh, information was valuable. Like I learned probably 
more in these these moments that we've been here than I'll probably learn like all week. And, and I'll just be honest. Um, as far as that, like, you know, I was that kid that was that was taught, like, you, you just keep your head down and you grind and eventually you will get there. And and you may be suffering, but you suffer in silence and you persevere. Like, and I got that from my grandmother. That was the strongest person I've ever known. I've, I've seen her just live live that, that mantra and until the day she died so but with that being said but when you when you do it that way um uh speaking from my personal ex experience um it can cause times or moments of anxiety uh, definitely moments of anxiety um along with uh moments of depression as well now so if there's people that that's that's out there going through this pandemic that that that's uh that ha that has been taught the same way that I was in regards to that is there kind of like um a mindset that's unhealthy that you would develop as you know as like a sign hey I'm going the wrong way and maybe I need to you know try some alternatives to kind of switch that up and get and uh get in the right direction mm -hmm. so to speak yeah, fantastic question. I am definitely one that believes that we are in charge of our narrative um, and that it is that I have the power to speak into my today and not allow everything that was taught to me to dictate today or tomorrow. Um, I can imagine that your grandmother taught you what she needed to survive. Um, because in that time period, it was a resource that was valuable for her. And what we're all guilty of is, um, and, and myself included, is bringing forward things that worked before and trying to make them conducive in a space that we don't need them anymore. Um, I am a survivor of abuse. There are times that I have to remind myself that I'm safe. And so some of those things that I used to do back then when I was not safe, sometimes I unconsciously still try to do those things and maneuver in that way. And so I have to remind myself that I'm in a very different space and I'm in a very different time. And what I needed to survive back then, I don't need right now. Um, so it's really important to make sure that you have your resources for today and that you create a narrative that's, that's um, uh, conducive to what you need. Um, it's hard for us. What's especially within the African-American community, we pass down uh, traits. We pass down struggle. We pass down dysfunction. We pass it all down. And it's not necessarily that people are intending for us to suffer in this time. Our mothers, our fathers, our grandparents did the best they could, could for their time period. Um, but we have to get to a place where we're able to create a narrative that works for us um, in terms of parenting. We, you know, uh, in my house growing up, it was due what was told to you, period, and you didn't have a thing to say about it. Uh, we do things a little different in my house, right? My kids are being raised by two counselors, right? So all we do is kind of, you know, I do allow them to at least to have a conversation. Now, if I'm, in, if I'm in the heat of fussing, that's probably not the best time to have a conversation with me because you're about to be in big trouble. Um, but they are allowed to come back to me and say, mommy, can we talk? Um, and I know what it's like to be told that I don't have anything to say. So I try not to create that environment for my children because in reality, when I was a, a kid, I had something to say. And had she paused to listen to me, I would not have been in trouble. But because she was doing the best she could as a single mother, she didn't have time to go back and forth with me. But I'm in a different situation. I have help. I have resources. And so I can take a little bit of time to say, come here. Even in my parenting, because I think Dr. Alexandra said again, let's have some more conversations about what's really true and what's really valuable. I say to my kids, what did you hear me say? Because I need to make sure that what went in their ear, that they got it, right? So what did you hear me say? If they tell me that, then I say, what did you think that meant? 
Because now if, if, if I think it means one thing and they think it means another thing, we both going to be frustrated and they're going to be in trouble. So let's clear the lines of communication. What did you hear me say? What did you think that meant? And if we're, once we're all on the same page, if you do anything other than what you heard me say, then now we got a different situation going on that you helped to create because we've already covered the ground rules. And so it's, it's creating what you need to survive and thrive, not just survive, but thrive well. I want to be able to go to bed in perfect peace. And I told these little children in this house, y'all not about to stress me out. I will put you on the grass first. I'm just playing y'all, but uh, I'm a mandated reporter. But they, they do know, we. Uh, some, it don't have to be hard. Lauren Hill said you'd rather, you know, you rather it, it said, she said you could all be so simple, but you rather make it hard. Let's not make it hard. Come here, little person. What'd you hear mommy just say? Sit down. What did you think that meant? So that, so that we can get on the same page and do some things differently. So hopefully that helped to answer your question. Yes, it did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the insight. <laughs> For sure. Do we have any more questions? Well, I think wait, wait, wait a minute. I have been trying to unmute. I was hitting the wrong button. Okay, first of all, <laughs> I'm sorry. I said, why can't I unmute? Because I wanted to, what I wanted to say was we we've heard the words anxiety, depression, and stress. <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't know those words being used interchangeable, but when you when you're feeling something, how do you like know the difference, you know, or is it the, a, dis, a distinguishing characteristics between anxiety, depression? I think stress is like overall word that you use, you know, you feel full. But if you want to like do some, do some things or get some support, um, do you know which word, like you say, you going in and say, I just feel stressed or I feel overwhelmed, but do you know if it's anxiety or depression per se? Those are excellent points. So we do use the word stress for a lot of different things. And there are differences between like clinically, um, clinical levels of anxiety and depression, right? So I'll describe them in the ways that people may experience them. Everybody experiences a lot of different things like depression and anxiety. It's when they cause you to not be able to function or to not be able to function well when we say that it's a clinical level or that we become really concerned. But at any point, you can go and um, talk to somebody about the things that you're experiencing. Okay, so when we say depression, what we are really talking about is a low mood. You feel down, you feel sad, you feel lethargic, or you don't have energy when you used to have energy. You don't do the things that you used to enjoy doing, whether that is sitting in the car to listen to the music, the music that you love. You're not even playing the songs that you like. You don't turn the TV on for your favorite show anymore, right? Um, you're not playing the games. You're not talking to the people. You're not doing those things that you used to enjoy doing. Um, thing, other things that could be a symptom of depression, you might be eating more. You might be eating less. You might be sleeping more. You might be sleeping not at all right? And that, that changes based on every person. Now, some of the uh, symptoms or the ways that we see uh, anxiety sometimes overlap, but generally speaking, when we say anxiety, what we're saying, what we're talking about is a feeling of um, unease, right? So uh, that can come in different forms. That might be you feeling really stressed. You can feel that in your body. I oftentimes feel stressed in my head, so I might have a tension headache, or I might feel it in my shoulders, where I feel like my shoulders have been bunched up here. My, my body feels really tired um, and exhausted and heavy. And that could also be a symptom of depression as well, right? I feel really sad. My body feels heavy and I just want to go lay down. Um, that could, for anxiety, you could have thoughts that you just cannot stop worrying about. They're just flowing through your head. I can't get off the topic. This person said this thing to me and now I can't stop thinking about it. I can't even go to sleep, right? I'm, it's still on my mind and I am having a whole conversation with this person who's not in front of me 
from something that happened earlier today. And I'm sure that we have all experienced those conversations, the things that we would have said if we could have in that moment, okay? Um, and so there are a lot of things that, that we experience that could um, fall within either of those categories and a lot of different things that could cause either of them. It's not unusual for you to feel any of those symptoms when you're in the middle of a pandemic and you have high stress because you have children at home. Okay, everybody probably, I'm gonna say that just about everybody at this time has probably experienced some kinds of um, symptoms of anxiety and depression, whether your anxiety um, and depressive symptoms are because you don't wanna go to the, you're really nervous about going to the store because there are a lot of people there and you know the stores that are near you, people don't always wear their masks, right? Or you just don't wanna go out of the house because you feel it's the most safe. You just wanna be at home. Um, or you don't know what's about to happen. People are losing their jobs left and right. You don't know what's going on with your job. People have been uh, whispering about what could happen. There are so many things that are happening right now that could cause you to have these feelings. And right now, a lot of these feelings are completely normal they're normal. This is what happens when you're in times of high stress. Stress is something that everybody experienced that could lead to depression or lead to anxiety, but our bodies generally are not um, built to experience prolonged stress like we have been experiencing for almost a whole year now. What we're supposed to experience is a high um, a high level of stress that kind of kicks our body into gear or we can adapt to whatever the situation is, everything settles down and we go back to normal. So again, realize that what you're experiencing is not outside of the norm. And if you feel like it has made things more difficult, feel free to go talk to somebody because you're not the only one who might be experiencing it in a way that it is stopping you from being able to do the things that you want or you need to do. We are in a pandemic. You have been under an amount of stress that you should not be under for this long, and you're not alone. I definitely wanted to, uh, you know, mention. Uh, I try to tell people when when they're trying to understand if things are different, different enough for you to want to be able to reach out to somebody. We all have a baseline of functioning. All of us do. Um, we all have what we would deem normal for us, and it may not be, you know what it looks like for everybody else, but we all have a normal, in a sense, baseline um, that we know well. You know, you might just kind of be really, you might, your personality might just be really quiet and, and low functioning. You don't say a whole lot. Um, and so that would not be out of your norm for think, for you to be really quiet and, and kind of, you know, to yourself. It is when you begin to recognize that you are even below your baseline or that you are really well above, like you are so out of character uh, or so away, deviate so far away from your baseline that you notice some, some severe differences. I believe our body tells, the, tells us, like, which is why we both talked a lot about making sure that we have an honest conversation with ourselves because I think our body lets us know um, quickly when, when it, it is in dis-ease right? Um, it's the, the, the dis-ease is the same spelling as disease. Disease in terms of headache, disease in terms of stomach tutors, tumors, disease in terms of cancer and high blood pressure. Uh, our body sometimes lets us know well before we get to the big diagnosis that it is uncomfortable. Uh, for me, anxiety shows up as a small headache, um, it grows into a massive migraine if I am if if I begin to carry my my stuff inappropriately. So I now know after having spent most of 2017 in a massive migraine state almost daily, um, a five out of seven days every single week I had a headache so much so that I had to have an MRI and all of that stuff. And at the end of it all, we found out that it was stress and anxiety related. So now I know in 2020 that if a headache starts here, Lisa is carrying way too much. And if I'm honest with myself, I am trying to answer questions that don't have answers today. Anxiety wants you to solve all of the problems today, even if it's a five-year problem. 
right? And so for me, I have to go back to my baseline. I have to say, Lisa, what is the truth? And in today's time, can I do that today? If the answer is no, I have to put it someplace else. And so it's really about being honest with yourself. It's about being really genuine and really being pure. It goes back again to the self of the self-care. If I am able to look at me, I'm able to look at my plate. Um, I have to be able, sometimes I have a lot on my plate. So in this season, I am learning the gift of no. Before a pandemic, I said yes to a lot of stuff. In a pandemic, I, tr I, I, I renege. I'm taking my word back on half of what I told y'all I could do. I can't do it anymore because the, uh, our, our terms are different. But I'm, no gives me anxiety because I wrestle with how people see me and what people think of me. So I had to write myself a note and it's stuck right here where I can see it. No is a complete sentence. Nice girls say no too. I have a note that says no, find it, say it, leave it. Cause I gotta talk to me so that my anxiety doesn't go in high gear as I do the things that I need to do to make sure that I'm in a good space. Um, so it's really, you can Google anxiety and depression and find a basic, you know, look at things like psychology today though, not Wikipedia. Um, <laughs> psychology today will typically give you a basic definition of what to look for and some things to look for that might be troublesome. And then when I think of whether you need to ask somebody for help, I always liken it to um, getting an oil change on your car. I know what it's like to ignore an oil change because either A, we couldn't afford it or B, we forgot or whatever. And I also know how much it costs for a transmission to blow. I'd much rather go and get an oil change every 6,000 miles or whatever the dealer said do because I understand that there is such a tremendous cost on the other end if I don't. Counseling, regular, regularly just checking in with someone is very similar to an oil change. You can go, it, nothing has to be wrong, nothing has to be broken. It just might mean you need a safe space to land and have your thoughts land and have your considerations land. And if we do that every 3,000 miles or whatever your point level is, we won't have to buy a new engine. Make sense? Yes, it makes a lot of sense. And mm -hmm. it went to the other question about when do you, <clears throat> excuse me, when do you know it's time for you to like get that oil change? I know when you talked about health, I had, um, was diagnosed with Bell's palsy back in October. And I was just like, where did this come from? And I had talked to Ms. Henderson and she was telling me, you know, different things. And when I went to the doctor, you know, they said it's part of it is stress and things like that. So that, you know, made me just readjust how everything was going because I started a new school year. We started virtual, you know, all these things that's, that changed for me for this school year. And then I um, had the Bell's palsy. So it was, it was just a lot to, um, to take on um, in such a short period of time. But I think when our body starts breaking down, it really tells us, you know, you, you, you need to figure out what's going on. And that's your body telling you it's time. Yes. And I want to make one more um, point about a symptom that people might um, experience, but oftentimes overlook. Because sometimes, as I mentioned before, all of the, the things that we experience are the tales of our body are are often very different, but they are really, really important to pay attention to and to know. And one of them um, is similar to empathy fatigue, but um, when you realize that you are in situations that should be touching to you, have been touching to you, that you should care about, and you find that you no longer care at all, that you're just so over it, you can't care at all, that is a symptom that something is wrong and that either you need to take a step back to allow your body to reset or you need to take other measures um, to adjust um, to the issue. That is a, a dangerous signal. Thank you. Now, would you maybe me speak to one other thing? And I know we had touched upon it, um, but what resources do we have within our community? I know we have a, 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 a network of 
so that we could reach out to it and contact and touch. Um, but if it, be, if it goes past that, if it goes past those those blues um, and it gets a little deeper and a little heavier, then if you ladies could speak to where we could send our parents um, and our families to, to get some of those resources that you all are speaking of this evening. So I'm Akron based and so, you know, my, my resources are more Summit County, um, but there is a 1-800 number for suicide prevention um, or, or, or uh, there's a crisis text line 747-747. Um, you can text, uh, you know, help me or call me or um, to that, that crisis text line and there's someone waiting 24-7 that can actually then begin to get you connected um, to your resources. If I'm not mistaken, in Cleveland, you all have, um, oh gosh, uh, mobile crisis um, is, is another place that you all have. Um, and, and so starting with what you know. I would say, if nothing else, um, where I started in terms of was going with my family practitioner. Uh, and she is actually who, between her and my counselor, they manage, they help me manage uh, my anxiety uh, and, and some of the symptoms that go along with it. So sometimes just a regular doctor's appointment will work. Um, and that person can then give you direction to go to other places. Most universities have at least a college department I'm sorry, a counseling department. Um, and so you can call there as well um, and at least ask for other resources. Uh, and then hopefully, um, and I'm not sure, Ms. Henderson, if you all have a resource list. And if you don't, I would encourage you all to get a resource list, um, a, a resource corner where people can just kind of go quickly, um, you know, put it in your email. Every time you send a newsletter out, put that kind of information on there for your parents, um, just some of the basic numbers. Uh, and then we can grow from there. Most counselors, if we, if you call me and I'm not able to help you, I'm going to give you two to three more resources within a, within your area, within your price range. Um, people who take your insurance, my company is private pay only, so a lot of times people will come to me, but they were really hoping to be able to use their insurance. Um, so I know I'm not the best fit for them, so I'm going to send them someplace else for somebody to be able to to help them, um, because our goal and our job is to make sure that you get the best help possible. Um, so again. Start with what you know. Start with who you know. If you know somebody that you thought they were a social worker, call them. Um, if they're not, they're going to get you to somebody who, um, who they know can help you. And if nothing else, call Ms. Henderson, and she has the resources as well. So. And a couple others. I see that people are dropping um, resources into the chat, and I will also put the mobile crisis telephone number in there. It is available to everyone. They will come to you or they will talk to you about what you need to make sure that you're connected to the right resources. Um, Metro Health also has, has behavioral services, which is um, mental health and, and behavioral. Um, if you uh, do go to Metro Health for pediatrics, um, you can always um, talk to your pediat pediatrician and um, psychology is in the department, um, always. They're always on the floor, particularly at main campus. Um, and at some of the other campuses as well. And then Ohio Guidestone is also another resource that um, you can access. Thank you so much. Um, so I think this has been a wealth of information. Um, I feel wonderful about this. I'm excited. Um, thank you for those resources. I, I, what I didn't want us to do was um, not to um, be able to give our, our families a place to land and, and a safe place to land um, before concluding um, this, this section. Um, so now, if there's no more questions, we will move over to um, our second half of the show. I want to say thank you so much. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, um, Dr. Golden, and thank you, Ms. Lisa McCraney. I so appreciate you all. Um, you guys were phenomenal. I'm just gonna give you a little for round clap. <laughs> um, but now we're gonna go to our breakout sessions. And so we have four other wonderful people that I just love dearly um, who have uh, agreed to helping us do some de-stressing. So they have interactive workshops. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce them in the workshops so that they're going to be um, leading. Um, and then what we're going to do is if you all, whatever workshop that you all want to go into, there are 25 minute workshops. Um, we're going to do a breakout room. And so if you put the number of the room that you want to attend in the chat, then be very patient with me. You extend me some grace <laughs> because I'm learning breakout rooms. Um, and so I will put you, I will place you in the breakout room that you've chosen. Um, and then we'll do a second, well, if we have enough time and enough people, we'll do a second round. If not, then you will be able to find this on our website. Um, as well as our social media platforms and our YouTube channel. And, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you. Um, so, without further ado, let me get started on this. So, I'm going to, I have it, again, I do apologize. I, my printer broke on me. So, I've got my second computer that I keep veering off to the right of me to, to read. Um, so our first workout session is with Ms. Brenda Effort, and Ms. Brenda is our Prevention Specialist from Recovery Resources. And what she'll be doing is, um, her class is Stress Lab, a Family Framework Guide to Identify and Manage Stress. Um, and in that, parents will identify their stressors, recognize um, the consequences of chronic stress, and learn effective ways to manage their stress. And that's going to be in room one. The second one is Miss Emily. Hi, Emily. Miss um, Emily is uh, the Community Service Coordinator from Providence House. Um, and she will be dealing with self care for parents and caregivers. And parents will learn the importance of self care, warning signs of chronic stress, and secondary trauma, um, and strategies for self care. And that is going to be in breakout room three. Uh, I'm sorry, I did skip because I have them listed on my on my sheet, but I have them listed on my computer in a different order. So please bear with me. <laughs> um, breakout room number two is going to be with Shauna Gunter Stevens, and she's going to be using she's going to do yoga and using yoga to de-stress. And Shauna is a certified life coach and yoga instructor and founder of Empowered to Grow. And in her session, she's going to be doing um, interactive yoga sessions where you will learn how to reduce stress and all the health benefits yoga offers, whether you're at home, work, or somewhere in between, yoga is always here to help you relax and you'll learn how to get started. And that's going to be in two. And so in my last session, room four is Mr. Ben Zimmer. And so Ben is going to do, Ben is our therapist at Larchmere Center for Wellbeing. So we do have, um, right, right literally up the street from the school is a wellness center. Um, but Ben is going to be doing mindfulness and how to cope with our inner critic. And I think we discussed some of this today. Um, and this interactive workshop provides families with information and techniques on how to identify their inner critic. Uh, negative self-talk and how to have more power in their lives. So our parents will learn how to manage big emotions that come from challenging thoughts and how to calm, de-stress, and find peace in these very unsettling times. So I think these are all wonderful breakout sessions. So I know it's going to be very difficult for you guys to choose, but please do so. And please do so in the chat, and then I will place you in those um those breakout rooms and then so let me let me just go back through and remind you guys room one is stress lab room two is yoga room three is self-care and room four is mindfulness so put it in the chat for me um and then what we'll do is we'll transition into those breakout rooms those breakout our, our first round will be 25 minutes um and we'll start the clock and if my host um I think I can put you guys in here. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn over to Miss Morton while I kind of figure this out. <laughs> yes, that is wonderful. So all the the ideas 
the one thing that stood out with me, I love about the, the mantra, having a mantra every day, because that's something that I really do. My mantra has been by any means necessary. And I always joke and I said, I have that everywhere. I had it on my checks. And then, you know, people like checks. What are checks now? People don't, you know, people don't use checks anymore. But I always, I, <laughs> I had that wherever by any means necessary. And I really uh, believe in that, you know, we're going to get through this by any means necessary. One of the fun things that <laughs> me and my daughter did one day, she was talking about she hated her math class and I was writing an email. So I said, okay, well, you do my work and I'll do your work. And then we come back together. So I had her finish my email that I was right. And I did, and I did her math. And so we came back. And so it was interesting. I don't know if I got the math problem right, but I did it different from what, what she had done. And I said, well, this is how, you know, I learned how to do it. So it's interesting just to see the different techniques that, um, that are around different from when how you learn something. And so the email that um, she typed, I just told her what needed to have been in the email. And so she she finished the um, email. So it was it was it was it was pretty pretty okay. So trying to you know do some things. But for me, I love coming to work because when I'm at home, my family thinks I'm there for them. That you know I'm at home because I have to be at home, not because I'm not working. And I have to always remind them that I'm here working, but they don't believe that. So I love going into to the school building because then I can get work done. Because being at home, it's, it stresses you more, I think, being, being at home. So I enjoy um, going, going, into the, going into the school. And um, it's, it's, it's pretty okay because it's, it's no, one, no one there is that, you know, we have the secretary and the food staff, the cleaners, that's all, that's all in the building. So it's really um, not a lot of people in, in the building. So yeah, it's, it's good to, um, to go in. And Ms. Henderson is getting it. I think I did something wrong. <laughs> You better I have to leave your yourself. room and record too, so I have to leave your room. I, I give me two seconds. Well, I'll see you later. Yes, you will see me later. It was so nice to personally meet you. you too. Should, I, should I press record? Yes, please do. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Where are you going to? Miss Welch want to be shy. Room number two. Room number two. <laughs> Ms. Wilson, I think she showed one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I can't work this thing. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm room going to room, go to room two. Okay. <laughs> what you want, room two? Mm -hmm. Yes. She wants yoga. I need <laughs> deep meditation. <laughs> yeah. Ms. Yeah. Wilson want one. I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you. Join. Yes, mm -hmm. it's join. Yes, I'm gonna. All right, I'll see you, uh, you folks in room two. For for those of you going to room two. All right, Miss Wynn right. is two. <laughs> Miss Nicole, what room three do you want? One. She wants one. one. Okay. What about Miss Hassan? Miss Hassan. Let's see her. I don't see Miss Hassan. She's not speaking. I don't. Do you see what room? Uh uh. I don't see. I don't see her room. Okay. I want. I want to go to one. You could put me in one. I don't. Yeah, okay. I don't know. And um, so you put Carrie in two. Yeah. Okay. Go to one, and then I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put Miss Hassan in mine.
I want to do a two minute mindful breathing exercise. Um, and this is for beginners just to put us into, I'll say, the mood. And so this is really kind of like uh, piggybacking on everything else that Dr. Golden and Miss Lisa uh, talked about earlier. So if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and start the video. And this. Miss Hassan, can you hear us, honey? So again, I am Shana Gunter Stevens, and I am going to share my yoga practice with you. So what is yoga? There's, so let's just go simple. We're not going to go too deep. We're going to use a simple definition of yoga being a discipline which focuses on bringing harmony between the mind and body. Um, so many things um, we touched on earlier on in today's um, meeting a workshop where Lisa and Dr. Golden talked a lot about self-care. And so that's kind of what started me on this journey of yoga was um, self-soothing. Oh, hello. I think you're muted right now. Sorry. Hello. Hi. So I wasn't sure. I just started recording and kind of just started talking about what I would talk about if a parent was in that group. So I hope that's okay. That's great. That's wonderful. I just wanted to come in and say hi and thank you so much. So you could go back and, and finish your recording. Oh, yeah. No problem. Thank, thank you for you. doing this too. prevalent. Hello, 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 Bonita. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? I'm good. Thank good. you. I didn't want to interrupt your um no I'm so your glad to see you. your presentation, but I'm so super excited. So I'm gonna okay. stay in, in yours for a little while, okay? Oh good, good, good. Then I'm gonna talk to you. Okay. I was just describing to um the video world kind of what is happening for me just as I'm sitting here around my inner critic. So what I was saying was like, here we are, I'm sitting here talking, I'm not used to chatting to a computer, right? And I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, do I look tired? Does this shirt fit? Like, do I know what I'm talking about? All these different things and that, that inner critic, that voice is just chattering all the time. Um, and what I was saying is sometimes that is much louder than other times, which is more challenging, mm -hmm. but what is super important is to recognize what are those thoughts that are coming up a lot? What are the thoughts that we find are like on play in the background all the time? Um, so we're going to dive into, the lat into that a little bit. But I also want to say that every human has an inner critic all the time chattering in their mind. Someone call it the monkey brain, someone or some people call it um, the inner critic, some people just call it the big self versus the little self, mm -hmm. there is this voice that kind of travels with us all the time, narr narrating how the day is going, what's happening. Oh, did I say hi to her? Did she look at me funny? Oh, like, I think I need to go to the bathroom. What am I gonna have for lunch today? There's all these things that are going through our minds. Mm -hmm. And so it's up to us to start identifying those thoughts and deciding which ones we're gonna give power to. So that is what we're gonna do a little bit today. Um, Again, for me, I really like to name and help people name their inner critics. So mm -hmm. by doing this, we can kind of create another, like it's not creating another personality, but it's creating that other part of ourself that we can decide to listen to or not. Um, so for me, I named mine Bernard. Um, my name's Ben, but I named it Bernard. And like I said before, some of the things that he says to me are like, 
oh, you shouldn't have eaten that. Oh, do these people even like you? Do you know what you're talking about? Um, are you amounting to anything? Big mean things that he can say to me. Um, and he looks like he's super fit, he's buff, he eats whatever he wants. He like, he's super rich. He drives a Range Rover, he does all these things. Um, and sometimes when he gets going and going and going, he can really make me feel emotionally flooded and overwhelmed. Um, and Benita, since you're here, I'm curious if you had to give your inner critic um, a name, can you think of what you would name that person and kind of maybe a few things that they might say to you? I'm putting um, you on the spot. My inner critic is named Cassandra. And yes, and she has a lot to say. Um, so she, um, it's a lot of negative self-talk that I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not small enough, um, I'm not even pretty enough, I'm too dark. So it, it's a lot that I, that she says to me that I have to silence. And there are certain situations where something can happen and it's a trigger and she just starts talking. <laughs> like Cassandra, get out of here. Right. right? Yeah. Right. Yes. Oh, well, thank you so much for sharing that. It's yeah. like, it's not easy to share and identify and talk about kind of the, the cruddy stuff we have being told to us in our own heads. Right. And sometimes I'll say, like, and I want to, as a therapist, like, I'm aware that many of us humans can get pretty dark in there. Mm -hmm. So our inner critics could say things like, why am I even doing this? Is it worth, like, being here today? Um, things that, that sometimes might need us to talk to professionals or other therapists or things like that. And so I just want us to be aware that it's hard inside of our heads sometimes and that help is available but also to know that it's very common for humans to have this ongoing um talking in in your mind about um criticism and about things that you aren't doing well or good enough so um Benita had mentioned something uh, miss henderson had mentioned that sometimes her inner critic cassandra can make her feel like super overwhelmed or emotional and um, I want to talk really briefly about kind of what happens in our brain when we get overwhelmed by an emotion. And oftentimes our emotions are triggered by our thoughts. Okay. Hello again. Um, <laughs> so I want to talk really quick about, let me see how I put this. Okay. So real quick, if everyone at home, whoever you're with, go ahead and put your left hand on the back of your head right here. Give yourself a little free massage and everybody say old brain. Okay, I hear you. Say it a little weirder so you can remember, like old brain. Old brain. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So our old brain is responsible for um, keeping us safe. It's our survival brain. It's the part of our brain that is in charge of our biological responses. So fight, flight, or freeze. You may have heard of those before. Um, fight could be like fight, or like yelling or slamming cabinets. I'm a cabinet slammer, a door slammer. I'm so guilty of that. Um, flight could be just leaving the situation or leaving the situation like emotionally, right? You just check out. Freeze can be, you just freeze, you don't know what to say, maybe your mind goes blank. So our old brain is the part of our brain that's responsible for keeping us safe when danger or perceived danger comes by. So maybe I'm here on this video right now and all of a sudden Bernard, my inner critic, chimes in and is like, you don't know what you're talking about. You forgot what you were gonna say. Mm -hmm. My old brain might think that I'm in danger because our brain doesn't know the difference between physical danger and like relational danger mm -hmm. and might kick in. And when our old brain kicks in, it does something super helpful sometimes because it keeps us safe but when it's not necessary, super unhelpful, and, and it takes over our new brain. So everybody take your right hand and put it right here, right on your forehead, right here, and everybody say, new brain. New brain. Okay, one more time and a little weirder. New brain. New brain. Good, so you can remember. And our new brain 
is our prefrontal cortex, if you want to get all scientific. Mm -hmm. And this part of our brain is responsible for logic, reasoning, thinking through consequences, thinking like, oh, if I get really angry and say something mean, like it's going to get me in trouble. You know, like that's our new, that's up here. Um, so what happens is when we get overwhelmed by an emotion, our old brain can hijack, take over our new brain, and we no longer have any access to our logic, reasoning, and consequences. So we are operating from our fight, flight, or freeze response. Now, something that is super, super helpful to think about is your body gives you a body clue. And if we pay close enough attention, which takes lots of practice, we can learn what our body tells us and that warns us that our old brain is about to take over. So I have some body clues here up on the screen. Some folks, their heart starts racing. Some people get a rush of heat through their body. I, I get super sweaty, so I can get super sweaty. Um, our hands might start shaking. We might get tearful and cry. Sometimes it's like hard to talk a little bit, right? We're starting to notice that we're getting overwhelmed by an emotion. Um, these are body clues that are telling you that if you don't do something different, if you don't hop on a different train, you are about to flip your lid or your old brain is about to take over. And again, you're going to lose access to your logic, your reasoning, and your consequences. So this happens. We are human. It is bound to happen. But the more we can pay attention to our body clues and be mindful about what's happening for us, the more power we can have over situations that we're in. So if me and Ms. Henderson are having a conversation and I am super, let's say Ms. Henderson and I, Ms. Henderson and I were supposed to go have lunch, let's say pre-COVID, pre and I saw, she said to me, I can't go to lunch with you. I'm very busy at Harvey Rice. I cannot go. So I was like, okay. But then I saw on Snapchat that she was like at lunch with a different therapist, like on Larchmere, right? And I'm like, are you serious? So let's say I, I'm talking to Ms. Henderson about it and I'm noticing Ms. Henderson, like, I feel hurt because you said you would go to lunch with me and you lied. You didn't go to, like, what's happening, right? If I know that when I get overwhelmed by an emotion and I get flooded and I flip my lid, if I know that I get a rush of heat through my body, then in that moment that I start talking to Ms. Henderson and I notice that rush of heat, I need to decide if I'm going to keep engaging in that conversation or if I'm going to move on or take care of myself in a different way because that's how I can get more power. I can keep our relationship healthy by talking through things when I'm not emotionally flooded, right? Um, Ms. Henderson, I know you have to come and go, but do you know what, what is your body clue when you're about to get overwhelmed by an emotion? Do you know what your body tells you? Um, I get very nervous. My stomach starts to do this churning thing. And that, that's, my, that's my cue that something is about, and even if I'm in a situation where I just kind of walk in a room, my stomach starts doing this churning oh, thing. Yeah. And I bet you know, like if you pay attention for long enough, you know the difference between certain stomach churns. Yeah. You're yeah. like, okay, I'm not gonna handle this situation well, I need to take myself out of here, yeah. or like, I'm just nervous, right? Yeah. Can you tell the, the difference? I can tell the difference, yeah. Yeah. Or it's it, it's fearful as well. Absolutely. So that, that fear, I know that that feeling is <laughs> I know that feeling very well. <laughs> Absolutely. For me, my body clue is like my lip. This is weird, but my lip gets really tight. So I'll feel like I can't. It just feels weird in my face. And I know if that's happening, like the adrenaline is coming, and I'm gonna lose access to my logic, my reasoning, and my consequences. Oh. Um, I just know it's gonna happen. Um, but that emotion that impacts that is not just like anger, it's also fear. It's also feeling embarrassed, whatever it is. So the reason why I bring this up is because the more we have awareness around these things and around what happens in our brain, the more we can decide how much we're gonna engage with that inner critic as those different thoughts come up. So let me see what else. Okay, we talked through fight, flight, and freeze. So we have like about six and a half minutes left. I feel like my inner critic right now is telling me how quickly I was speaking. So I apologize at home if you're trying to like catch up with my brain. 
Um, but I'm going to choose not to listen to that part of my inner critic and just go on with ways to calm down. Um, so something really interesting about the human brain and body is that once our old brain or our survival brain takes over and floods our system with adrenaline and we are operating from a fight, flight, or freeze response, that adrenaline stays in our system. Can you guess how long? Miss Henderson, you might know, but can you guess how long it stays in our system? No. So some people are like three minutes, 30 seconds. It is a minimum of four hours. So it is in there. You might think you're cool. You might think like me and Miss Henderson thought our lunch thing, thought we were cool. And then Miss Henderson looked at me a little funny and I was right back in it. Like who's ever had that happen? Yes, absolutely, yes. So um, during those t that time, after you are overwhelmed by an emotion or if you're nervous and you're anxious, we need to actively choose to do something else to calm ourselves down. It's not gonna just go away. So some things that I really like to do, um, I really like to breathe as we all do to be alive. Um, but I noticed that like day to day, my breath is like up here. So I might be like shallow breathing and not getting a good breath and talking a lot or whatever it is. The kind of breathing I'm talking about is square breathing. And what that would look like would be breathing in for four seconds or four counts, if we're gonna talk like we're in choir, hold for four counts, exhale for four counts, and then hold again for four counts. So it's gonna be like, Breathe in, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four. And then you can do it again and again. I usually say to try and do it like two or three times, okay? Um, and it helps us regulate our, our pace of breathing and also by counting, we're trying to activate that prefrontal cortex, activate our new brain to keep it online, to help calm our system. The next thing would be, well, I'll ask you all at home that hopefully are tuning into this. Um, music for me is super helpful. Is music helpful for you all? I imagine yes for many of us. Um, let's see, Ms. Henderson, do you have any music that you like to listen to that calms you down? Well, because Christianity is my base, so gospel music calms me down. Awesome, awesome. So do you know like the type of voice that helps you calm? Is it like, like I know for me, like listening to like people really singing, like like belting it out, like stuff like that helps me calm down. Um, the, uh, a, a quiet, soft, Low song brings okay. me back. Perfect. So you know what kind of music to go to to help calm yourself mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Some people are like, I'm going to listen to whatever. It's an angry song and it's going to help me calm down. I'm like, well, think about it. Maybe it will. But also, like, music can impact how we feel. So if you're hyped up and you're trying to calm down, do you want to be hyped up even more by the music or do you want to be relaxed? You want right. to be relaxed. So it's up. It's everybody's their own way. But um, another way, I briefly mentioned this, but if you start to feel overwhelmed and you start to feel overwhelmed by those thoughts from our inner critic, um, a really important thing to do is to activate that new brain. So there's some military tactics um, where if you are, you feel like you're starting to get overwhelmed, you want to count backwards from a hundred by seven or like try and think of as many streets as you can in Cleveland or try and think of as many candy bars as you can, or the seven dwarfs. Do we even rem remember the seven dwarfs from like Snow White? I do. Yeah, so like Sleepy, Dopey, I'm like, I don't even know. So like, you see what- Grumpy, you, um, grumpy. hungry. Well, I don't know what's hungry. Not hungry, I'm hungry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Doc. Doc, 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 yes. Doc Dopey. So see what we're doing right now, folks at home, is like we are trying to think about it. So we're activating that new part, that newer part of our brain, that prefrontal cortex. Mm -hmm. um, by doing that, you kind of keep your survival brain at bay. So I would love for you all at home to think about what are your healthy go-to ways 
um, to calm yourself down or to distract in a healthy way? Is it art? Is it talking to a friend? Is it going outside? Is it taking a shower? Is it splashing water in your face? Is it screaming into a pillow? Like sometimes we need to do that. Um, so any other ideas from you, Ms. Henderson? Um, or is it crying? Yes, is it crying? It's, it's, not, it's not bad to cry. I don't like crying because it has a, I, I fight crying. So I'll start and then I'll stop. Like instantly. Yeah. And it almost looks fake. Like was she, but I'm trying to catch hold of myself. Yeah. Um, and, and instead of allowing that emotion to just take over and move through, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes we just need to let it go, yes. right? And like cry. Yes. Maybe you need to sit in the car and cry. Yeah. Or like go into the bathroom, go into the closet and close the door, whatever it is to just let that out. Um, so absolutely crying is such a good way. Um, and you know, sometimes I need to like have a cold glass of water um, <laughs> or I need to like have something delicious. Um, I can get into like a too much food, like sugary thing sometimes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I try and like keep mm -hmm. it light and feel good. So I see that we're running out of time. I hope you all at home can pay attention um, to yourselves. Okay. Um, and listen to your voice inside and help yourself go on a different path. Um, if you need help or support, reach out to me, ben at lcwellbeing.com. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Henderson. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's see here. I'm going to stop the recording now. Okay. And then I think I'll get to give that to you. Yes, please. Okay. All right. Perfect. Ms. Anderson, do you get the recording from that? Like, do you think it just goes to you? I don't know. I don't know either. I, I guess I'll find out. I hope so. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Oh. <laughs> I'm rushed. <laughs> I know, but we have 15 seconds. <laughs> then boom, it's gone. <laughs> right. Oh, God. Let me... oh, Lord. Okay. That is good. That's all right. <laughs> we were doing our yoga. I definitely work. worked up a sweat. That was good. Yes, it was everything. Oh, it was that good. was a great that breakout. Was that was awesome. a great awesome. breakout. Awesome. I'm buddy. had a great oh. um, breakout session. And I jumped in a few of you guys. I know it was wonderful. Um, I, 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 it's on, it's going to be recorded. So. Um, it's 7.45 and I don't want to do another session because I want to be very mindful of the time frame because we did stay from 6 to 8 and um, I asked these wonderful people to come on and do these workouts, uh, workouts, this work for you all and I don't want to extend them past the time that I asked them to be here with us from 6. <laughs> Ms. Henderson, if I can share, um, I did share this with my, um, my class. Um, I will share with you my, you know, give you the contact information for the parents, and I will hold a once a month a session for your parents so that they can to help them through this pandemic. We all can use it. <laughs> right. Is, you know, we have to alleviate it as much as possible. So if I can help in that manner, I'm here for you. Greg was all in. Ash, everybody was, Ashy was all in. I know Miss Welsh was doing her thing. I was so proud of them. Um, awesome thank you so much thank you so much and you know i will absolutely take you up on your offer <laughs> shauna thank you i was there i was cooking you, at Ms. the Ms. same Ms. time so okay time. Oh, so. <laughs> yes and time to ourselves good, good. yes <laughs> thank you guys for the opportunity definitely get with definitely get thank with, you. with shauna. she will get you together Yes, I uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will definitely be back. Thank you. Me too. Me too. Is there um is there anything that you guys want to share from your breakout sessions that you had? Now remember, we're gonna post these on our 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 social media and our website and things. So give me about two days 
to get them clothes. <laughs> oh, you better not do that. I took my wig off. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not. Well, once I edit it, once I figure out how to edit, I'm going to edit. That's all. That's all. We just bump it off a little bit. That's all. Okay. But what, what did you guys, what was some of your takeaways out of your, out of your workshops that you all had while we have a few more minutes left? I don't leave that stress. Um, I mean, you know, it 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 definitely took my mind off the lockdown. I did, I felt I was very engaged, uh, just the breathing. Uh, for me, it just offered so many things. You know, uh, you know, one, uh, your your lower back is going to help on that. It's going to help on your shoulders, your core. Uh, it'll get you the right breathing. Is going to get you that mental release that you kind of need. To, kind of just keep going, you know, so it's kind of like a bridge, you know, uh, in just that short time, I felt better. So, you know, I could like imagine just like every day. Um, it wasn't my first time being exposed to it. You know, like I said, I, I already had a mat, but I won't lie. It was dusty. So don't hold it against me, but it was a mat. So, it, so you know, it was, it was, it's uh everything. Uh, for those who didn't get a chance to participate in that room, I would heavily suggest that. Okay. Anyone else? It it um like like I was telling her before, I had tried yoga um by myself like in the beginning of the pandemic because I'm like I need something. Um but when you don't know what you're doing, it can be very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So, um when she brought us back to the breathing, when she brought us back to the breathing and that literally like instantly like started to center me and I started to feel better and it was just like riding a bike you know kind of getting back into it so it reminded me I need this time like I was enjoying doing meditation in the beginning that was something I did like at least three times a day and of course once things started happening uh kind of fell off on um meditating but I enjoyed that couple minutes and I wish it was longer and I'm excited about doing it again because that literally the little anxiety I did have prior to it instantly went away once we started the breathing exercises and you know started doing the um the position so it was really good for me. Where did you get them pictures from? <laughs> the kids was paint, painting some of the kids painted. Oh, they are beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I think it gave us a, I think it gave us a time just to have time for ourselves and to block everything out because we did um I, I did the um, mindfulness and just taking two minutes out list closing your eyes and just releasing. I think everything else was shut out. And it was funny because Ms. Eford has said, I hope you all didn't fall asleep. But yes, that's where, that's definitely <laughs> where it was going to go to sleep. Because everything, I mean, you just, yeah. you just shut out everything. And it was just really nice to shut everything out yes, and just was. to just have a blank slate. Yes. <laughs> So one of the things that I will say to everyone is that as you begin to try to develop your own self-care routine, whether it be through yoga, whether it be through mindfulness meditation, um, whatever that would you know look like for you, you know, just be kind to yourself and be forgiving. You know, don't try to jump in and say, I'm gonna spend, you know, 30 minutes or an hour, you know, doing XYZ. You know, start off in the smaller increments. Mindfulness meditation is amazing. You know, at my day job, I work for a local bank, and we actually bring in people um, to help us with mindfulness meditation and yoga. <laughs> so they understand how the banking industry can be stressful. So just take that time for yourself. Like, you have to be intentional. That would be my word for you guys. Be intentional to provide yourself with self-care. I agree. I do as well. Well, this was great. So I was with, um, I agree, Shauna. Thank you. Uh, Miss Shauna, I was thinking that mindfulness and yoga really go hand in hand. They do. 
And remember together. when I said when I said with the defin I gave you a very simple definition of yoga, just the discipline, focusing on bringing harmony mm -hmm. within, between the mind and body. Once you begin, for me, I began with mindfulness, and then I went to meditation, and then when I started doing just breathing and yoga together, it it just took me to a but, whole different level in space. In why do they separate them though? They make them seem like separate entities when really they're intertwined. You can't they do can one without the other. You well, you can do. You can do as you. You can be mindful your, your without the other. Yeah, you you begin to incorporate it all and you fold it all together to make it work for you. Mm -hmm. um, but it's easy. For, it was for me. It was easy to learn mindfulness meditation first because I had to learn how to silence the mind. Mm -hmm. um, because I would be doing yoga and thinking about, okay, I'm breathing here. Oh, I gotta go do this. Oh, I gotta do that. So right, for me, right. I by me learning those things separately, it helped me pull them together to help so, me <laughs> better utilize and benefit from it all. Right. Okay. Anyone else? It's a very small group, so don't be bashful, because we're all experiencing the same thing. Right. And so we all have, we're all extending grace and mercy to each other and we're extending it to ourselves as well. So, like Shauna said, um, there's just be very intentional about it and don't try, try to jump in all at once and, and say that I'm just going to do X, Y, and Z by this date. And then when that date comes and you haven't fulfilled that goal, then we're in a whole nother situation and, and you, you, giving yourself some unnecessary burdens. So I think these tips and tools that we've, we've provided for you this evening have been very helpful. Um, like I, the goal of it was that whenever you get to a place um, and you feel like you would need to um, do some mind techniques or, or quiet the inner critic or learn how to do self-care or do some good or just go into the dog pose. Like, you have those, you, you have starters available to you. Um, and then you have these resources um, that are available to you. These are our community partners. And so um, I'm very, I feel very honored to have them in part of my toolkit that I can reach out and ask them to come in and do something after hours. And, and they were more than willing to do this. Um, and as an added bonus, they just going to throw extra ones in. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm grateful and then they're letting you know like we have these resources right in our backyard so please take advantage of it and we do have another parent group um, scheduled for December 15th 6 to 8 it's going to be our holiday edition so um, we'll be doing holiday games we'll do um, an award ceremony for our parents um, that's what the schedule is. And then from there, um, we're just going to go into just having fun. I don't think in this time where we've been having fun, we've not um, let our hair down. We've not been able to just kind of breathe and exhale and just enjoy one another because there's always something that we have to do. Um, so in those two hours, two weeks, um, we're just going to have fun. We're just going to throw caution to the wind. We're going to play a few games. We might play Hollywood Squares um, since we're in squares. <laughs> Tic-tac-toe, um, celebrity game show, something just to have fun as a family unit. So if, there, if you guys don't have any more announcements, yes. Ms. Hey, Brady. so um, this was wonderful. I enjoyed myself thoroughly. Thanks. But to all of the parents that I did not have the pleasure of meeting, um, I did post my number to recovery resources. Um, at one point, I, I felt like I was speed speed dating, you know, trying to talk real fast. And I told Miss Nicole Wilson that I have a wealth of information and tips for parents, you know, during this whole pandemic thing. And not just for the parents, for all of us. But I really, truly want you to go to this website, Sean Fargo Mindfulness Exercises. When I say he is the guru of meditation, like Ms. Morton said, she fell asleep for a minute. 
It's so relaxing. And his meditation exercises are free. They're okay. free. So please, like I said, for ev anybody, um, pass it on because we all can benefit yeah. from these meditations. Um, so that is my contact number. You can find me at Recovery Resources. And please Google Sean Fargo. He's wonderful. Nice to meet you, Miss Wilson. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Well, it was great. I will um I will have these resources available for you. Give me um give me two days um to get this on our webpage and I'm going to um make it so it's a landing page. So when you want to talk to Miss Emily over at Providence House, because you know Providence House is a is a I'm gonna say this right, a critical uh, nurse. Did I say that right, Emily? It's a crisis nursery. Crisis nursery. I don't know why I say it. Crisis nursery. Mm -hmm. um, so just real quick, Emily, give give them a, just a, a, some background on what the Providence House does. Yes. So Providence House is a crisis nursery for families experiencing a variety of crisis or crises where the children need a safe place to go. So we can help families with kids ages zero to 12 and we can provide 24 seven shelter for the children at Providence House. Um, and then the social workers, we work with the parents to get them the resources they need to alleviate whatever the crisis is that the family's going through from homelessness and unsafe living conditions to maybe inpatient medical, hospital stay, um, respite care, anything like that. We like meet the parent where they're at and the parent also um, retains custody of the kids the entire time. It's all free voluntary service. Um, and our goal at the end is family reunification and making families stronger together. So we're located on the west side, but we don't have zip code requirements or anything like that. And we're um, in the process of building another nursery on Buckeye and 118th, which will be really close. Oh, that's Emily, yeah, Emily, Emily, Emily. Yes, yes. Do you guys mind taking in a parent? I'd like to go. <laughs> I do. Sometimes you're not the first person that she did, actually. <laughs> she was saying, not saying what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, I, I have written it, it too. <laughs> Maybe we'll keep that in mind for the next one. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Um, Zimmer, would you please oh, give us a brief overview of what um, the Wellness Center on Marchmere is? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, hi everybody. It's so fun to be here. Love hey. having you guys. Hello, hey. hello. Um, so I we're just opening Larchmere Center for Wellbeing. It's on Larchmere and 127th. Um, we have six ish therapists now that take like a variety of insurances, medical mutual, Aetna, Care Source, all sorts of things. Um, and we have folks that are ready to support individuals, couples, and families. Um, oh, that's right? great. And, yeah, and we would love to work with people from Harvey Rice in our neighborhood. So I live right we, down the street from there. <laughs> do, do you? Yeah. Then when when the pandemic is better, come over and say hello. Come over. I and sure say hello. will. Um, we're right across the street from Unbar, um, and we are super excited to get people services they need. So thank you okay. so much for having us. Thank you. For me, for just me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Ms. Brenda, would you give us a, a brief overview of, um, so we all know, I know you are new to Recovery Resources, but um, she's phenomenal. So would you just go on and give that overview for us real quick? Okay, well, once again, my name is Brenda Efer. I am one of the prevention specialists at Recovery Resources. I've been here for about a month, ooh, about a month and a half. So I'm new to the company, but I'm not new to this. So right. I'm new to the, yes, let me just say that. Um, I am definitely a people person. <laughs> and I got to be honest with you. Um, when I started uh, working at Recovery Resources, I was like, oh my God, I got to deal with children. I'm not good with children. But I wouldn't have it any other way right about now because I am learning from these kids. And now I see how important it is to start at the earliest age possible to have that type of impact 
on our kids. So when, when I was talking to my group earlier about, you know, uh, parent parenting during uh, coronavirus, it all has everything to do with making sure that your child is also okay. And just like the doctor and Ms. McCraney was saying, it's, it's okay to not be okay sometimes and own up to that. I have to remind myself too, but recovery resources is all about prevention. And one of the things that I really and truly love is the prevention part because we, I facilitate in substance abuse, mental health. Uh, I don't do so much gambling, but right now I've been working with the little ones. And like I said, just having that impact on such an early age really, really is going to have a wonderful impact as they get older. And so recovery resources is all about helping people, helping people and preventing people from getting more I'll say more into their whatever addictions or uh, substance abuse issues or whatever the case may be. Um, but that is my phone number. Uh, you can reach me. I will be more than happy to talk to you um, about the other you know, services that Recovery Resources offer. And yeah, that's about it. So yeah, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you, Ms. Bonita. So I'm just talking and my mic was muted. So, <laughs> but thank you so much. Thank you for being willing to um, come on and speak with our families um, this evening. And so that brings me to Ms. Shana Dr. Stevens. Ms. Shana, would you please give an overview of Empowered to Grow? Hey everyone, again, I'm Shana and I am the founder of Empowered to Grow and that birth from when I, um, as a younging, I was a single mom and I affiliated myself with the organization that helped me. And as women, we are taught to kind of sort of, you know, be quiet and fall into different societal norms. And in that um, process, we kind of lose who we are. We lose our voice, we lose our direction sometimes. And so that's where Empowered to Grow came from was for me to help people, help women, empower them themselves to grow what they want to become. So my motto is to discover your true self and become who you always dreamed of and shine brightly in your greatness. And so I am here um, to provide life coaching services as well as um, meditation and yoga services to my ladies that I serve with. All right. Thank you so much. This has been a wonderful evening. It's about four minutes after eight. Dr. Golden, I so appreciate that panel discussion that you all did today. Um, and, I, and I loved all of our breakout sessions. So I'm so happy. Um, again, I think this was a wealth of information um, that we have provided our families. So some were able to jump on and then some will be able to watch this in rerun, Ms. Wilson. <laughs> it's not true, Miss Wilson. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. Gonna be all right. <laughs> and I greatly appreciate you all giving your time and taking a moment to, um, as they say in at the view, take a little time to enjoy this. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have a wonderful evening. Um, we'll look forward to seeing you all on the fifteenth. Thank you so much. See Good ya. Night. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye